Hey YouTube, I'm Chris Enns. I make podcasts. I help edit podcasts for folks such as these. And in my spare time, I also make videos about audio apps and things. So this video is about a uh, perennial favorite and most one of the most requested videos, tutorial videos, is talking about Loopback. It's uh, Rogue Amoeba's app for basically routing audio around your Mac. And the main sort of question or struggle I think folks have is when do I need loopback and when do I need to use something like Audio Hijack from Rogue Amoeba as well? Both are great apps. I have lots of videos on Audio Hijack. I haven't really figured out a way to do a good loopback video. So hopefully this answers some of your questions. As always, feel free to throw any comments or questions you have in the comments down below. And I'd love to hear from you. If you have more detailed questions or things you'd like help with in terms of the audio and want to hire somebody to help you with that kind of stuff, feel free to hit up my contact page. And uh, there's a little link there where you can book a consultant call with me or whatever. But at any rate, let's get into Loopback. Okay, so this is the interface and I have, uh, of course, been using it. I'm reluctant to delete everything and start fresh just for the sake of the video, so bear with me. When you first started up, you'd have none of these uh, devices set up already. I think the only device that's maybe set up is a pass-through. Um, but basically what these devices are is you can think of them as new audio channels or devices on your Mac. So normally when you go up to your sound control panel, although I have uh, sound source plugged in, so this isn't a normal Mac setup, I guess, also from Rogue Amoeba, um, you would just see your output and input and that's it. And what Loopback allows you to do is create new audio devices to route audio around your Mac. So the main reason why you'd want to do this and why you need Loopback for this is a lot of apps on the Mac where you want audio to come in don't allow you to set it to other apps. So for example, let's open up, <laughs> it just happens to be another Rogue Amoeba app. Let's open up a, a sound app they call it, they make called Farago. I've got uh, all sorts of fun sound effects. They they bundle some with you with it. Um, and let's go to the sample set here. <coughs> Slide whistle, great. So let's say I'm chatting with my buds over on Discord and uh, I wanted to, I'm in a voice chat, obviously I'm not going to bug any of them right now, but I wanted to, besides just my microphone, I want to also send in the audio from Frago. So what I can do with Loopback is go in here and you can see I've already got it set up. Normally you'd have default built-in microphone and maybe your Scarlett USB or whatever sort of preamp, you, USB preamp you have, your webcam might show up as an audio device, but Frago itself does not show up as a thing you can throw into Loopback. And so... I've created an audio device in loopback called Discord In, just to help keep my brain straight. And that's represented here. So any other software that I throw into this device called Discord In, so I've got Frago here. I had Safari at one point. Um, the Obviously the microphone that I'm talking into also needs to be in there. And then a pass-through. So anything that goes into this device will get sent out to the uh, output on my computer as well. So I can hear it. Um, more on that later. So I could add, for example, uh, let's say, what apps do I have running? Let's say I wanted to send also Firefox. Now I'm using Firefox as a browser, so I want to have that running. So any sort of videos or anything I played in Firefox would get shared. Any noises, sound effects, etc., all that kind of stuff. Um, you can also send just your Mac sounds. So whether it's Finder or Siri or VoiceOver kind of audio you want to send through at this device, you can add that as well. You could add a second microphone, let's say, if you had maybe you and a bud are chatting here locally and you want to chat with a friend, but you both have mics. Um, you can also, with a, something like a Scarlett device, as you can see, where it has multiple inputs, you can choose which inputs go where and have them all routed into one device. All these things aren't possible with the built-in native uh, Mac audio settings because, like I said, You'd probably just see default, built-in microphone, maybe your USB preamp camera, and that's it. So then I have also set these up in a way such that I have different purposes for each device. So Discord obviously is anything I want to send into Discord. Ecamm Live is when I'm using doing uh, live streams with Ecamm Live, a great software. So uh, when I switch over to Ecamm Live, uh, you can see that in their audio monitor, it picks up my microphone on its own. So I don't need to send my microphone through that. But anything else that I might want to um, send to Ecamm Live as an input, I could choose, instead of choosing my microphone, um, Ecamm Live, I'll just say, has, has improved their ability to capture your desktop and capture other audio devices. But it's kind of an all or nothing system where basically everything on your Mac, any audio your Mac makes, would get uh, captured. Um, and so I still like to use this where I can get um, the... Uh, Ecamm Live input right there as a input. And so then I have control over what is actually getting sent to Ecamm and what isn't. 
So there again, of course, if I want to send, you know, Frogo sound effects, maybe, um, or Discord sounds, like if, if I'm chatting with a friend on Discord, and I want Discord's audio to be routed back through to Ecamm Live to live stream, that's one way of doing that. Frogo, of course, if a browser I'm looking at, maybe I want to send that. Maybe I'm showing, wanting to show folks what I'm editing in Logic Pro. And Logic by itself wouldn't send audio back to Ecamm Live, maybe, um, or playing some music back. I've got Apple Music or Spotify or Pretzel or Safari, maybe if I was using Sound, uh, SoundCloud as an audio source. All of that would then automatically get routed into Ecamm Live so that I can control it there. The other nice thing is, just to show you while you're here, is you can control the volume of it right here individually so that if your buddy, buddies are shouting really loud in, in uh, Discord, you can turn that down. Maybe Farago settings are too loud or too quiet, you can adjust there. The other thing that's, I think by default, may, might get turned on here when you add a new device is mute when capturing. So this is, can be handy where you don't want to hear it twice, maybe if it's a device you already have routed somewhere else, but often you'll want to be able to hear it, obviously, what you're sending as well so that you can hear what and monitor what's going on. I have another device called Just Music. And so this is where you can actually chain sort of multiple devices together inside a loopback. And so these are just basically anything on my computer that I might use to play music, as you might expect. So Apple Music, Spotify, the app, and Pretzel is a, a app for playing non-copyright music for streaming and things like that. And of course, I could add any other device, any other Mac uh, audio device that I want to here as well. I had an OBS stream because Ecamm Live and OBS are basically both live streaming apps. And for whatever reason, I wanted to keep them straight as I was messing around with stuff. Often I would use OBS to stream like gaming stuff. And so I wanted to make sure it captured Minecraft audio and sent that into OBS rather than worrying about whether OBS was going to capture it manually or not. I can just set it one device in OBS as the input as OBS stream in addition to my microphone and off to the races. And then finally, uh, Loopback works well with things like Zoom. Uh, obviously hugely popular now in pandemic times, but uh, you could also use this for Skype. You could use it for any sort of uh, communication app you use to uh, communicate with friends and family. And so there again, just having the ability to set up multiple devices for each kind of scenario that you might be using audio. So I can send uh, Farago again, sound effects, funny sound effects on my Zoom calls or browsing and sharing just some audio, playing back some music. Here again, I could add the, the entire music um, setting device uh, down here, virtual devices, I can just add that. And then that's right there already. And uh, yeah, adjust volume, etc. Uh, within the device itself, you can turn it on and off. So that's quick and easy and handy. One thing I'm going to do that I should have shown you at the beginning is uh, in the preferences here, you can turn on not much for preferences in <laughs> loopback, but I like having dark mode on a little easier on the eyes, a little less uh, playing havoc with the light balance as you record videos and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is just set up a new device just so you can see what this looks like. So let's call this uh, live or uh, YouTube demo device. And so right now by default, it's just set up as a pass-through. And this is one of the more simple things that you can do with uh, Loopback is basically just use it as a pass-through. And so you could set up uh, basically if you wanted to send audio from one app to another app and send the output as in uh, let's say Frago here. In the preferences, I could set the output to YouTube demo device of it. And then the input, let's say on, uh, go back to Ecamm Live here, the input could be YouTube. I might have to restart. So yeah, I just had to restart it, but in uh, here I can check YouTube device. And then if that was all I ever wanted, for example, I could just turn on Funky Loop it starts playing. So that's one way of routing the audio through to something like Ecamm, if you just want to go directly and not worry about uh, what it is, uh, adding other devices along the way. From there, then you can, of course, add devices. So let's say I wanted to send the output from uh, Logic Pro, because I'm doing a uh, demo on Ecamm Live with Logic Pro, and I'm gonna unmute that while it's capturing. And then I go back to Logic Pro, let's say, and trying to edit. So I can see that it's a little loud. So in here, I could turn down the volume. So 
because that doesn't change for me recording or what I hear locally, but it does change what the uh, stream gets. So that can become, come in handy if you're maybe wanting it at a certain level for yourself, but wanting to be able to talk over it for the stream or whatever you're recording. If you're using something like ScreenFlow, like I am to record a video, you may want to also have Farago along for the ride just to be able to send some sound effects when you're also capturing uh, the screen. Maybe you need to send uh, just car screeching <laughs> for whatever reason. And then, yeah, like I've said before, you could use your browser of choice that maybe you're going to be playing a YouTube video or things like that uh, for a live stream or a recording of some sort and want that along as well. And that just all gets routed through to a channel, two channel uh, output, and then that can be chosen as the input device on this YouTube demo service. Demo device can be chosen as the input on any app, basically on your Mac that allows you to choose what kind of devices you'd want for your input. And failing that, you can also use the um, your Mac audio switcher as for the input. You could change it to YouTube in demo device or whatever device you've named it to be. One thing that uh, Rogue Amoeba touts as a, as a feature for Loopback that I haven't really figured out a good use for, but I'm sure there is a great way and a benefit or a reason why you'd want to use it, is you can route audio through multiple channels. So this would probably come in handy if you had different, like a different kind of devices than I do, where you're maybe routing things back to hardware um, and need to set up certain audio going to certain places. So maybe you want uh, Logic Pro, for example, to be actually going to channel four over here. Um, and not into into channel three here or whatever, sending things to different places on your Mac or different hardware devices in, in channels on your Mac. And then you can also set up different monitors so you can have your internal speakers being blasted with the, the output of whatever you're doing, regardless of where else you're sending the audio, you can send it to your, your internal speakers maybe, or you have some speakers plugged in. You can also, of course, send it back to your monitor through your in my case, the Scarlet USB device or other things, turn them on and off as you need. Um, and that can, again, be able to adjust. So you can adjust, like maybe just have it at 20% low, low volume for the room, but you want to be able to hear it really loud in your headphones uh, or whatever device you're using um, to listen and monitor the, the conversations and the, and the sounds you're sending. A couple of quick final scenarios I'll show you just as far as how you can make use of this, especially as it relates to recording on your Mac, as opposed to live streaming or, or screen recording and things like that. For example, in Logic Pro, as a, as a software recording app, it can only choose uh, one input device. You can't choose multiple things, even though once you're recording, obviously, as a uh, each track can have multiple input devices if the software or if the hardware that you're connecting can do it. So in my case, this uh, Scarlett 18, uh, what is it? 18 I8, 18 I6, whatever it is, uh, has 18 inputs technically. And so I can choose any number of those. I happen to basically just use one, but <laughs> if you wanted to uh, be able to choose to send say Frago and your microphone and maybe a guitar you're strumming for whatever reason, you want to just have that all coming in as one app, uh, one device instead of multiple tracks. That's something that you can do in Loopback. So just for another example here, we're gonna add a new virtual device. Uh, we'll call it Logic Pro Input. And my sources are gonna be Frago, of course, because I'm gonna have sound. And then also my microphone. Uh, so I'm gonna choose my Scarlet USB device. And I'm just gonna make sure they're not muting. Um, and maybe, again, we'll just use Firefox for an example. And so then I can go over to Logic and choose my input device to be uh, Logic Pro Input, Apply Changes. And now if I go to, I'm gonna mess up a project here, but <laughs> I'm just gonna move some of this over. And turn on Record. It shouldn't really matter. It's actually a stereo track, but I don't really need that to be. So you can see that the levels are going up here or here, I guess, whichever way you want to look at it. If I hit record, it's going to be recording once it gets to the, there's the track recording. I can turn something on in Farago. Let's turn on the slow jam.
I was hearing it twice or three times. Cool new feature of Farago, by the way. Quickly drop it down to a lower volume if you want. Um, and then let's go to Firefox and... So that's also getting routed and all recorded inside of. So I'm going to kill Farago. Uh, that's where it gets messy <laughs> and why, honestly, the biggest reason why I've sort of held off on doing a loopback demo is because it's, it is complicated in terms of tracking what audio goes where, in addition to making sure the screen recording is actually recording everything the way I think it should as well. And using uh, loopback just to have a pass-through device, just call it pass-through. And this is less needed these days because of uh, apps doing a much better job of like Ecamm Live, like doing a much better job of being able to capture audio from various sources. But again, just for demonstration purposes, this is one other benefit of Loopback that you could make use of, uh, where if I wanted to send all of this stuff from uh, Audio Hijack, whatever it's doing, it's recording, it's sending things out to for me, it's doing things like that. I could also then send it as a... Um, as a pass-through, so pass-through there, and send that into Logic as an input, audio input here, I'll just say pass-through, so that whatever I'm recording, and obviously I wouldn't necessarily do this on an existing project, but whatever I'm recording, I can just solo this track and record here. Anything that's recorded in um, Audio Hijack I have to get the. <laughs> this is where I need the ability to draw a path. Paul, if you're watching, I know you know that. <laughs> Anyways, I'll just keep it going moving for now. <laughs> uh, the ability to yeah send all this through as a pass through. So I hope that gives you some ideas as to why you might consider picking up Loopback. I found it indispensable. I know initially when I bought it, I think two or three years ago, I was kind of like skeptical as to how much I would actually use it. It feels like one of those devices or software apps that you use once or twice and then you set it and forget it. And that is actually honestly the benefit of Loopback in a lot of ways. It just works and you don't have to think about it too much once you've got it all configured the way you like. And uh, it does takes care of a lot of the sort of routing of audio on your Mac for you. Of course, if you visit rogamiba.com slash loopback, you can have a free trial, free download to try it out and check it out. I think it degrades the audio maybe after 10 or 20 minutes. Um, and so that's, and then obviously you can pick it up. Yeah, and Rogue Amoeba is great as far as uh, offering upgrade options, upgrade paths as you, every time they put out a new version, like a new, a major version release, and then they're updating it all the time with new features and new, new touches and fixes and things like that as things happen with software these days, especially the way Apple is messing with audio and stuff on the Mac. <laughs> Uh, my hats off to the folks at Rogue Amoeba for keeping up with all of this and doing it for me so that I don't have to figure it out every time. One thing to note is if you are using uh, Audio Hijack already and considering picking up Loopback, they do offer a podcast bundle of Audio Hijack, Loopback, Farago, and Fission, which is their uh, audio editing app. Fairly indispensable actually once you have it in your toolkit as well because it allows you to just quickly do a touch up on an MP3 without losing any quality. Um, and so that's an option anyways to consider if you're thinking of getting Audio Hijack, which I think is the most expensive app in that bundle. So if you already have two or three of the other ones, you might be able to combine that, send them an email or message. I don't know if they'll let you do it post purchase, but uh, if you don't have any of them and you're thinking of getting any of those apps, at least two or three of them, the bundle is going to save you a bit of money and check that out. All right, that's it for this video. As I said, please leave me any comments or questions you have in the field below, in the comments below. And as always, hit up lemonproductions.ca slash contact or slash hire if you want to hire me for a bit of consulting or if you need a podcast edited, I'd love to help you out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.